After one shakedown patrol and two war patrols, S-33 had destroyed a total of 33,000 tons of enemy shipping. I have to admit, the crew and the pig boat exceeded all expectations. It seems the brass thought so as well. On September 8th, I was given command of USS Gudgeon, SS-211, a GAR-class submarine. In addition to this, I was also transferred to Pearl Harbor. No more dreary skies and constant storms, just the calm blue waters of the Central Pacific, or so I thought. Upon seeing USS Gudgeon, I was in love. This boat was a proper fleet boat, a significant upgrade from the bucket of bolts I was sailing in earlier. Large, fast, and able to pack one hell of a punch. The Gar-class submarine was essentially a repeat of the Tambor-class. Six Tambor-class submarines were commissioned before war in Europe broke out. Once war did break out in 1939, six more of these subs were ordered. This batch was called the Gar-class. By the time the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, all 12 boats were completed. During trials, the Tambor class exceeded all expectations. She had a surface speed of 21 knots and a submerged speed of 10 knots. The boat was able to crash dive to periscope depth in around 35 seconds. She had improved Wilton and Fairbanks Morse engines, which were far more reliable than the dreaded HOR engines that a lot of boats were equipped with. One great improvement over the older Sargo and Salmon class boats was the Mark III TDC. This computer was a bit smaller, allowing it to be fitted into the conning tower. This made it much easier to digest information and keep the captain up to date. No more yelling into the control room for information. Everything needed for an underwater torpedo attack was located in the conning tower. In order to carry out attacks, the Tambor and Gar class boats were each fitted with six 21-inch bow torpedo tubes and four stern torpedo tubes. We would be firing the infamous Mark 14 torpedo. I'm sure rants about this fish in my journal entries will be common. Regardless, the boat carried 24 of them. Of course, there were plenty of other improvements. Fresh water distillers, air conditioning, which was really a glorified humidifier, a mess hall, and much more. The boat had excellent habitability for these long cruises. After some 20 years of working on the fleet boat design, the United States finally built a fleet boat no other submarine service could match. USS Gudgeon departed Pearl Harbor, Hawaii on October 3, 1942. Our orders were to proceed to the Curiel Islands once again, familiar hunting grounds. The plan is to refuel at Midway before proceeding to the patrol area. Early in the morning, we arrived at Midway and we quickly refueled before continuing on our merry way. The journey was uneventful as expected. The most exciting news was the Cardinals beat the Yankees 4-2, taking the World Series 4 games to 1. Two nights ago, in the disputed waters of Guadalcanal, a U.S. Navy task force of cruisers and destroyers under the command of Admiral Scott defeated, in a night engagement, a Japanese naval force in the Battle of Cape Esperance. Scout aircraft sighted earlier during the day a Tokyo Express convoy trying to land more Japanese troops on the island. The task force sailed around the western end of Guadalcanal to block the entrance to Salvo Sound. When the enemy force of three heavy cruisers and two destroyers were sighted by radar, Scott reversed course to cross the enemy's T, leaving the van destroyers in the rear racing to catch up. Unfortunately, they were forced to pass between the Japanese and American task forces when both fleets opened fire. The destroyers made an unsuccessful torpedo run and the American cruisers temporarily held fire to identify the destroyers. The Japanese ships reversed course, exposing each ship to fire as it turned. A Japanese heavy cruiser and a destroyer were sunk, while another heavy cruiser and a further destroyer were damaged. The U.S. destroyer Duncan, DD-485, 
was disabled by enemy fire and further damaged by friendly fire. The crew abandoned ship just before she blew up. Salt Lake City and Boise cruisers, as well as destroyer Fahrenheit, DD-491, were damaged. We have finally arrived in our patrol area. Our orders from Subpack were to conduct a search and destroy mission. USS Gudgeon is equipped with SJ Surface Search Radar. It's time to put it to the test and begin the hunt. This new radar is already proving its worth. New radar contact bearing 003 degrees, long range. The target seems to be closing. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here, and welcome aboard the bridge of USS Gudgeon, our brand new GAR-class submarine. We picked up two contacts on radar about an hour ago, and we have intercepted them. They're off to 1 o'clock here, and they both seem to be little sub-chasers. I forgot exactly what class. I believe these are the Corvettes. Uh, we sank quite a few of these in S-33. However, with our new and improved GAR class sub, I'm, I'm really on the prowl for bigger prey. If I remember correctly, each one of these little sub chasers is only around 800 tons. Also, considering the sea state, I mean, you look at our boat is just rocking and rolling here. Um, but with these massive waves, it is going to be difficult to actually hit these targets, especially considering we are using the infamous Mark 14 torpedo now. And uh, I'd really, I'd really rather engage uh, larger freighters. So I'm going to go ahead and order the boat down to periscope depth. I see no need. As a matter of fact, our, it looks like the leading vessel may actually be turning away from us. It, it looks like we caught them in the middle of a course change. We're currently making around six knots at standard speed in these horrible conditions. Let's start moving up to flank speed and get down below before we drown. <laughs> My goodness. All right, let's bump it up to flank and man battle stations while I'm thinking about it. All right, hello everybody. You can see the brand new interior here, nice and spiffy, especially compared to the rust bucket that we were in earlier. This is a real fleet boat, that is for sure. All right, passing 41 feet, dropping down nicely. Okay, reduce speed all ahead one third. We are going to continue on our original course. Yes, sir. Fantastic. You can go to the map and see exactly where we are patrolling. We are pretty much patrolling the same waters that S-33 had her last patrol in. I do want to work my way further south towards the home islands, though. That is our plan. And uh, hopefully we can find some larger freighters down... Uh, near the home islands but i figured i would scout this area out first and you know it did not take us long to find a pair of warships let's go to the hydrophone and see if there's anything else in here okay these are our warship friends those are our own electric motors and no nothing and you can see the hydrophone is placed in the conning tower here which is awesome we can actually go up here and Pretty much everything we need to conduct an attack is in the conning tower. Now look at all this. We have our hydrophone, both radar scopes. TDC is there, and then our night and regular attack periscope right here. So, very cool. This boat is definitely an improvement, and I'm excited to uh, put it through its paces. We're going to drop down to, oh, let's say around 100 feet. Stay nice and quiet. And uh, we'll let these two little sub chasers go on their merry way. Hopefully, we find some more freighters here soon. The enemy warships passed by us with no fuss. USS Gudgeon was once again on the prowl. During a routine hydrophone sweep, we pick something up. Loud contact to the west. Medium speed, moving away. USS Gudgeon would pursue.
After about an hour of chasing, we finally made radar contact. By the looks of things, we have stumbled across a whole Japanese convoy, at least four ships. A radio message was shot off to Subpack. It is time for USS Gudgeon and a crew to prove themselves. After attempting to get into position all morning, we finally did it. We were ahead of the convoy at around 1100 hours. I have to admit, it took much longer than anticipated. The convoy is moving at a rather quick speed, and the sea state did nothing to help our situation. Now we wait for them to cross our path. Okay everybody, we have visual contact on the enemy convoy we've been tracking bearing around one, two, zero, two large freighters right there. That's all I can see for the time being. I don't have anything else sighted just yet. However, I think it is time to send this report to Subpack and we'll see if we get a, a message here. Sink large troop transports, okay. That is the plan. Apparently these are troop ships. I can do that. I think it's about time we submerge the boat though. I see a third ship on the horizon, just can barely make it out. These seas are definitely going to make it a little difficult here, but I think it's time to dive. Periscope depth, please. Bring me down. Uh, go down to around 60 feet. I also want to man the battle stations. All right. Man battle stations here. We can see all of our enemies are right here. Pretty good setup. We may be a little close for comfort, and I do I do believe there is a warship in this convoy. Uh, we will be able to confirm that once we are completely submerged. It looks like they're apparently going medium speed. All right, how's the boat doing? Passing 35 feet now. Good work. All right, dropping down to PD, perfect. Okay, I'm liking this setup with our six bow torpedo tubes. We should be able to uh, inflict quite a bit of damage here. Definitely on these two ships in the lead. It looked like there's two freighters leading the convoy, not the destroyer, if there even is one. Okay, transports likely loaded with supplies slash troops. Very important target, use your discretion. Do not neglect other assigned objectives. Well, this, uh, I got to admit, this is pretty close to our assigned objective, so I am going to take this opportunity and sink them all. Let's check here. Yep, six bow tubes, all loaded with Mark 14s, of course. I'm going to go ahead and set these up all for contact uh, pistols. The magnetics are questionable, and you know what? I'll do it with our stern torpedo tubes as well, just in case we get the opportunity. We are going to use the low speed setting as well with our Mark 14 torpedoes. And now we lay and wait, folks. Let's check uh, real quick to see. Warship. There is a warship here. Okay, good to know. I would be surprised if there wasn't, uh, considering... <laughs> How many large ships are in this convoy? We have stumbled across quite the prize. Okay, the troop transports are starting to get pretty close. It is time to commence the attack. Let's lock onto the lead one here and try to identify it. It is, of course, a merchant ship. And I'm guessing it is rather large. Um, Iyo Maru? I don't think so, but let's just get a better ID here. Need to take a good look at these masts, that's for sure. It could be it. Troop transport, 9,815 tons. Top speed is 17 knots. 
I like the sound of that, <laughs> to be honest. It would be nice if this was one of our targets. Uh, but I don't think it is either of these. Maru. Hmm. Let's just flip through these, see if I can... If anything uh, really resembles it here. Lots of uh, troop transports. Maybe that was it, actually. Let's flip through the rest here. Lots of tankers. Is it obviously not a tanker. Um, I have a feeling... What is this? Ian Maru. No, I don't believe it's that either. Okay. I think it was one of these two were uh were at the front. No. All this stuff is relatively small. Split merchant. No, no, no. I'll just triple check here. Submarine tenders. Or tenders. Okay, obviously none of none of this junk. Okay. Well, let's flip through here. I think this number two may be a Hio Maru here. I mean, look at that superstructure there. Yeah, let's uh, let's go with that. Actually, let's plug that in. Now this one, this one's the tricky one here. What could this be? Turin Maru. Very possible. Let's look at the structure. The stack looks pretty short and thick, though. No, I don't believe that is her. This one's going to. This is an interesting looking vessel. It's going to be kind of, uh, not just, not a troop ship like that. I could always use the auto identify button. That takes a little bit of the fun out of it, but, you know, it is there for a reason. Real now. Hmm. Kassan Maru. No. Interesting. Yeah, that short and stubby stack is really kind of throwing me off here. All right, let's uh, let's try the auto identify. I don't want to bore everybody here. ID target. What are they saying? What are they saying? She is. A constant Maru, really? I did. Uh, I did actually take a good look at that one, huh? Yeah, that is her. Interesting. I do not see that like at King Post. I guess it is back here. Yeah, I did not see that on here, so I uh, kind of threw it out. But that's good to know. Four thousand tons. I'll take it. I will take it. Let's go ahead and rig for silent running. Take a look at everyone else here. Uh, there's a destroyer back there. Okay. It's actually in the rear, though, so we should be able to launch our fish and uh, get out of dodge rather easily. I did check their speed. It looks like they are going at around a speed of 9 knots. We need to probably reverse a little bit here. Yeah, reverse a little bit. Thank you. And now we can move forward. I just don't want to be too close when we launch. All right, let's go to our attack scope. Look at our friends. Okay. Lock on target. What is the range to you, my friend? And we will bring this up. All right, range to target. It's going to be hard to establish range in these rough seas, but that's just the way it is. Mark. Okay, range, 1,700 yards. Looks good to me. Angle on bow, 40 degrees port. Mark speed. We will go with 9 knots for the time being. Plug that in. Turn on the position keeper. Looks like this ship is pretty heavily armed as well. Looking good, though. Looking good. Torpedo depth. Make that non-existent. Zero, please. The Mark 14 has a tendency to run deep, so we are going to hopefully. Mitigate some of those issues there. 
Yep, definitely heavily armed. Look at that gun on the bow. We have a big chonker of a gun on the stern as well. And I'm sure this one's just as heavily armed. I think the uh, troop ship in the rear is definitely the priority target. So we are going to wait for her to be at an optimal angle. And then we will fire at this other one at a less than ideal angle. All right, let's get some time compression going and uh, watch these guys close in. It's interesting how the rear here is all kind of clumped up. And let's actually reverse the boat again. We are getting a bit too close. I dropped my scope as well, just to avoid any nasty surprises. All right, I think we're good. Up scope, let's take a look. Yep, this one should be dead ahead. Lock on target. All right, lock. Range, she is damn close, Mark. Shit, she spotted our scope, are you kidding me? All right, open tubes. All right, fire one. Fire tube two. Fire tube three. All right, our other friend lock on target. I can't believe she spotted that. We may have broached as well in these seas, Mark. 1,000 yards, angle on bow, 50 degrees, port, speed, nine knots. Let's actually bump that up to 10. Open tube four, tube four is already open. All right, position keeper, fire tube four. Angle to the left on tube five. Fire, tube six to the right. Holy crap, fire. Down scope, all ahead flank, emergency dive. Emergency dive. All right, let's dive, dive, dive. We'll see if we get any hits here. Torpedo impact. Got at least one. Two impacts. Let's get it. Okay, that was extremely successful. Three torpedo hits on the large troop transport, two on the Akasa and Maru. She already went down. She, she was destroyed. We are down at 160 feet, reduce speed, and turn around. Let's head south. Fantastic. And it looks like the Hio Maru is going down as well. 9,972 tons for a botched attack. Um, those are damn good results. <laughs> we hit everything we wanted to, despite being detected. Now we have to just evade that, that destroyer up above. Well, folks, that is going to do it for today's episode. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you all on the next one.